and Margaret, there are conditions by which these things have to come into play to be enforceable. Talk about that a little bit. Well, there are a lot of problems uh, with this post-nuptial agreement. Uh, I found the asset disclosure uh, that I saw a little questionable. You mentioned that Michael has a plane. I didn't see that on the asset disclosure. Uh, you claimed that you were under duress from what you told the producers. So the main part of the document is very clearly numbered and lettered, and it says if any part of this is unenforceable, the rest of it will remain in effect. So with your add-ons, I kind of saw what you were trying to accomplish there, and your add-on spoke to the relationship and where you wanted to go and what you wanted to build together, and I thought that was great, but the way you went about it wasn't that good. So you started with, if you file for divorce, there is no post-nup. That's illogical. Did you hear from Michael? I was a consulted an attorney. He was pretty crummy, huh? Well, because he didn't exist. <laughs> well, so you start basically by saying, if you get a divorce, there is no contract. That's yeah. a non-starter. And because all of your other clauses were kind of tied together, when one loop on the sweater pulled, you lost the entire thing. Uh, I would really recommend that you revisit the main part of that post-nup, and you should have things that you want in that agreement as well. You can do it, but it has to be done the right way. Would you be willing to do that? I'm not sure I understand what she's talking about. I think she's saying that you, you want to incorporate some of your things into the main body of the agreement. So basically rewrite the agreement. Is that what I'm hearing? Redo the post snap? That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, I, I'll consider it. Sure, that's no problem. If, um, if this proceeds to divorce, uh, is it your legal opinion that that post-nup is enforceable or is it vulnerable to challenge? It's my uh, very strong opinion, Carrie, that if you have a good attorney, the post-nup is out the window. And you would say that because... I would say that because she was under duress. I would say that because the asset disclosure was problematic and she was not, in fact, represented adequately by counsel. Any one of those three things alone could void the agreement. You have all three. It's done. Um, Carrie and Michael have a decision to make in four days. We'll be right back. <laughs> Ask a, a, a preeminent uh, will and trust lawyer to join us today. A state attorney, Ann Margaret uh, Carroza, is, is here to talk about this. And I mean, that's good public policy. It's mores and folkways of the society, right? That's the norm, except here we have a change, that there was a point in time where Grandma did specifically name these granddaughters. And how did this change come about? Again, if Carl represented that this money is as good as in Fort Knox with me and the <clears> girls are ultimately going to get it, uh, that's terrific. Yeah, but isn't his story going to go a lot better since he's the only one telling it? I think you're, again, you're going to look at the change in the circumstances. Carl said today that he wasn't even aware of this change until after it happened. Uh, that would be highly unusual because if the 05 change named you as a co-trustee, you would have had to sign that at the time of the document right. for it to be valid. And I did. So you said earlier that you only heard about it after the change. So I, I think there's a, a little issue here. I think this situation is crying out for a mediation, and you hit the nail on the head. This is not really about an estate. It's not about money. It's not. But what about a, a grand gesture, and you take 15,000 of this inheritance and fly everyone down to Mexico for the wedding? Hey, a special thanks to estate attorney Ann Margaret Carroza. Here with some insight on this topic is attorney Ann Margaret Carroza. So is this true? Yes. 
Now, yes. this is uh, the love contract is sort of like the next generation and prenuptial agreements. So um, the love contract, though, is really special because it can serve as the mission statement for the couple and really be a, a joint goal setting device. But, but is it just an idealistic notion or is it literally, hey, if we don't have sex at least twice a month, we're done? Is, is it well, the, hit or miss targets? It's hit or miss enforceability within this contract. So we're going to have aspirational goals, our financial goals together, um, sexual expectations come into it. Now, that's probably not going to be legally enforceable in a court of law, but it's important to get that out there on the front end. Get all of your pet peeves out there. How often do you want your mother-in-law to visit? All of these things. So this is, and, and you encourage clients to include some of these things if they're important to them? I really do. This is a very useful exercise, bringing the contract process into it to kind of... Honey, it's the 31st. We've only had sex three times this month. You know we said four is the minimum. I mean... And you said you wouldn't get any more tattoos right here, yet you did. So oh, it, it goes back and forth. And it forces the couple to sort of put these things out there on the front end. I want to move on to a Twitter question because I think this is something really important a lot of people don't think about. At Lisa Sternfield asked, I'm putting off doing a will because it's expensive to hire a professional. Is there a cheaper way to do it myself without making mistakes? We even know in medicine, end of life planning, it's highly underutilized. Wills go along with that. What should someone like this do? Okay, don't do the will on your own. There's so much at stake. If you have limited finances, call around to a bunch of attorneys, see if someone is gonna let you pay it off over time. If your finances are non-existent, make some phone calls, see if someone would do it on a pro bono basis. What about some of these online will making I, websites? I Are wouldn't okay? do it, I wouldn't okay. do it. It's a penny wise and a pound foolish. They're gonna be in court with it for months and months and months on the other end. Now when someone has a child, I don't care you don't have any money, you think you don't need a will. If you have a child, you need to put within the will who's going to be the guardian of that child. Otherwise, a court is going to decide. Now, beyond who raises your child, how old do you want them to be when they inherit assets? And we look at Whitney yeah. Houston, we look at Michael Jackson. There are good and bad examples out there of how we deal with property and our children. Whitney Houston's will allowed Bobby Christina to get two and a half million dollars at 21 years old. I don't know about you, but I didn't know what the heck I was doing with money at wow. 21. So the point is, if you don't have a will, think long and hard about putting one together. And you can learn more of Anne margaret Croza's tips at our website, thedoctorstv.com. And Margaret, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much. Thank you. More on the other side of the break. Next guest is going to help us get over something really big, and that's guilt. And she's here to talk about a topic a lot of couples don't really want to talk about. It's called financial infidelity. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Attorney Ann Margaret <laughs> Rosa is here. For, for, uh, welcome. Hi, First welcome, of all, welcome. nice to have you. But what, you. what is financial infidelity? It's financial dishonesty, and an estimated 7 million Americans are keeping financial secrets from their spouse or partner. This can be a secret bank account, a secret credit card, and I'm going to give you some clues to be on the lookout for. I work with couples on prenuptial, postnuptial, and cohabitation agreements. I call all of them love contracts because we want to emphasize that financial difficulties between couples should be based on a foundation of love and respect and trust nice. I yes. yeah. tell us what uh, financial infidelity means it's financial untruthfulness anytime we have secret spending or secret saving I can have a, a partner who's buying assets in someone else's name without my knowledge mm. he may be helping adult children from a prior marriage any financial activities that are compromising our joint financial future is infidelity. I said at the top, uh, getting into this, spot those warning signs. What are we looking for? What are those signs? The number one clue is going to be a post office box key. If I don't know that my partner has a post office box, 
there's something going on in all likelihood. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, we want to look at credit card statements. We want to look at our credit scores once a year. And we're in tax season right now. We really want to look at that tax return. Why? Because Why the tax return? aside and apart from telling us about financial untruthfulness, we could be exposed to criminal sanctions. Look at Teresa Judice, the uh, real housewife, mm. who is now in prison because she claimed she signed something without looking at it. You can't do that. The judge said you were either in on the wrongdoing <laughs> or you should have known. End of story. Isn't there a, a innocent spouse law? What happened to that? Did it go out the window? <laughs> uh, for, for all practical purposes, the judge is going to base the decision on would a reasonable person know? And this day and age, we expect both partners to be fully conversant with the finance. We resist the impulse to do it in a negative, aggressive fashion. Okay, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So then what do we yeah. do? That's not going to get us anywhere. You've yeah. been betrayed. You're angry. So what is this? But this you is know? why the contract right. process is helpful, because it causes me first to step back and examine my own behavior. Have I ever been untruthful with financial matters? Mm -hmm. Oh, this stress? I've had it for ages. What's to stop you breaking that prenup? Well, this is a contract, so it's designed to last after the marriage, after the cohabitation, whatever the relationship was. Uh, 27 states now in the United States have enacted or are considering revenge porn legislation. So this is a crime in some states to tweet or post sexually explicit images. But this would create civil monetary penalties uh, that would stand apart from any divorce agreement. But you, you see this prevalence of online online kits, online wills, online health procs, okay, well, you're saying no. Well, it, it's, sort of, it's sort of like do-it-yourself electrical wiring. You know, it's very, very dangerous. The single most common online document is a trust. But how do you know which one to get? A revocable trust? Sounds great, but everything in it is subject to estate taxes. A purely irrevocable trust? Now we're going to have a capital gains problem for the kids. You want to be somewhere in the middle? But that could be 25 different trusts. You need a lawyer for that piece of it. Medical tourism, now yes. we have divorce tourism. Uh, the Dominican Republic has been the destination for uh, many of my clients, some of my friends. And you can go there one part party can go there and get a divorce. With, wait, wow. Without the other's knowledge or? Well, the other party has to know about okay. it. Okay. But I can go alone. I could claim my husband knows about it and I can come back and a uh, decree will come in the Is mail. Is that legal? It is legal unless my husband claims he was not properly notified. So then he would come into a New York court to try and overturn the divorce decree. But then do you want to stay with that person? Wow. <laughs> exactly. Say, exactly. You know, by the way, I divorced you this By the way, weekend. so yes. it's <laughs> the classic scene when you come home and the house is empty and yes. there's a note, by the way, we're divorced. Well, it's a way for the court to triage the cases. Yeah. Yes. So instead of a very simple, uncomplicated a divorce languishing for eight months and building up legal fees. It's, done. Uh, it's a way to it just deal with it. Wow. The Small Business Administration estimates that 52% of all U.S. businesses are home-based. Yet this particular deduction, uh, many people don't benefit from because it was a red flag for an audit for many years. So a lot of taxpayers, a lot of my clients said, I'm not even going to bother taking it because they didn't want to go through the audit. But the IRS has issued issued some helpful guidance that we can deduct $5 per square foot of that portion of the home that we use exclusively for our business. Uh, you hit the nail on the head as it relates yes. as it relates to a prenuptial agreement. So mm -hmm. as an estate planning attorney, which is what I basically do, I advise uh, people to have their children enter a prenuptial agreement to keep the family assets, the business assets separate. Uh, but when we have wrongdoing, when we have fault within a marriage, when the guy cheats 
and the woman is deciding whether or not to give him a second chance, she'll often ask for a postnuptial agreement, saying, okay, you get one more chance, but in the event that you fall off the wagon again, I get I get X. it all. Exactly. And I can get a divorce in any state now that we all have no-fault divorce. But beyond that, uh, we might want a penalty clause. Mm -hmm. If I've given up five years of my life uh, in my career where I could have advanced to X level and we're breaking up because of your cheating, then am I not entitled uh, to a monetary settlement? I would urge both parties to have a non-disclosure requirement within the prenup where they're not allowed to speak negatively about each other in public. It would be awfully difficult for them to resist the temptation because that could mean millions and millions of dollars. They don't have standing, they're time barred. California would require an objectant to file a proceeding within 120 days. That has clearly come and gone. I think the number one reason that people talk about the validity of a will, even in the absence of a bona fide challenge, is the hope of a settlement. A love contract is a legal document, sort of like a prenuptial agreement, that can also include a list of deal breakers, where if he cheats, she gets $5 million. Reported that she would receive $500,000 per episode of infidelity on the part of Justin Timberlake. Increasingly, we were seeing celebrities with lifestyle clauses. Uh, what would happen in the event of infidelity or substance abuse issues. If I were advising Kanye, which I'm not, uh, I would strongly suggest that he have a non-disclosure or confidentiality clause within their love contract. Make sure that the rules are crystal clear. Never spot someone because then they can claim that uh, you agreed to spot them. There is uh, a winner and it's uh, an office pool. You can be sure that people are going to say, I thought I was in. I thought that you were going to cover me. That's our, our usual mm -hmm. deal. That's why it's so important to have rules and never deviate from the rules. Put the money in a trust because we all know that the win is subject to income taxes, but it's also subject to 55% estate taxes. Well, that's brilliant diplomatic speak. So regret, does he regret, you know, the overreaction in India? Does he regret uh, the U.S. attorney's action? It's does... vague enough, so it's, he's not really calling anybody out. A and the hope is that everyone hears what they want to hear from it, because at the end of the day, this is crying out for a settlement. India is one of our most important uh, and treasured allies uh, in the world. And uh, it's a terrible concern for not only U.S. diplomats abroad, but we have 60,000 American nationals living and working in India. So, you know, the anti-American sentiment there is very, very troubling. This is crying out to be settled. Do you find it kind of curious that they, they gave her some freedom as, as far as, like, trying to find a babysitter before they brought her into custody, getting her some coffee, and then yet they did a full body search? You know what? I'm not really persuaded by that. Uh, Pre Barrara saying we got her a cup of coffee. It's like big deal. You look at uh, former U.S. Attorney Rudy Giuliani bringing Michael Milken in. You know, a, a monster uh, by all accounts. And did they he, give him a full body search when they? They made an appointment. You know, in a very nice way for him to come in and surrender. They did. She, yes, she could but, not have been expecting this arrest, or she would not have taken uh, her daughter to school with a legal separation, the couple is still technically married, but it does allow them to come up with an agreement on the property issues and custody of the children. There is a chance that they had no prenuptial agreement coming into this.